We're here looking at our data context that wraps our speakers component to provide both the speaker list and the loading status for the list. We did that by passing to the context the object we named state, which had those values as static properties. I indicated earlier that we can pass react state to the value of a context, but of course I didn't mean naming it a variable state and setting it to an invariant object. I named it state because my plan was to refine it as real state with the react hook use state. Then with use effect, allow the state to be set to a new state. Let's start that refinement. First, let's add the import for use state and use effect. Then let's create our const state with use state and pass the initial value as the first parameter of that. Let's start the status as loading instead of success. Now let's add use effect to our data provider and have it include set timeout in the passed in function. In the completion event of set timeout, call set state with our full speakers array and pass in the status set to success. Now browsing to the speakers page again, we've got our loading message coming up for one second, then the speakers list is shown. React state is working for us as expected. That was really straightforward. Let's add a little redirection to our app, which will result in our data context being simpler and no longer having to include the hooks use state and use effect. We'll do this by introducing our own custom React hook. What is a custom React hook? It's basically just a JavaScript function that starts with use and it can call other hooks. In our case, we're going to return state to be used by the caller of this hook, and we are going to use the hooks use state and use effect just like our data context did. Let's plan on calling our hook use request simple and plan on it taking no parameters and simply returning state. Let's cut to our paste buffer, our speakers array, our use state and our use effect calls. Now let's create a new directory off our source called hooks and create that new hook use request simple.js there. We'll create a basic function and import React, including the hooks use effect and use state. Let's paste our code back in here, including how we used use state and use effect. Then simply return state. Now back to our data context, add the import statement, add our call to use request simple and remove our references to use state and use effect, and then browse to the page. We've got our loading message up for a second, then the speakers. Back to the code, look how clean our data context class is now. It's barely two lines of executable code. Custom React hooks are a very valuable tool you should keep ready for use when it's appropriate like it clearly is here. Time to bring in our full speaker component functionality. Let's update our JavaScript array-based context to one that has the same capabilities as what we developed in the previous module for HOCs and render props. We'll retrieve speaker data asynchronously from our JSON server, as well as handle updates to our favorite speaker status through REST put calls. In our last clip, we used a React custom hook to return props to our data context. I'm sure you recognize the similarities to our HOCs and render props implementations in the last module. In both implementations, we created separate JavaScript classes with request for HOCs and just request for render props. Taking a look at the higher order component with request, all this code from the reducer call to where props local is assigned is about calculating a new state that gets returned to the wrap component as incoming props. Let's copy all that code into our paste buffer and take it back to our used request simple React custom hook. One quick change though, let's save this file as use request and drop the simple because interacting with data through REST, though not complex, is not simple like interacting with a JavaScript array is. In our code, after the speaker's array declaration, we start with use state to establish what state data we are going to manage, and that's followed by use effect. That's almost the same as what we just cut from the HOC, but in the HOC, we had use reducer, which is really just a superset of use state. Let's replace all this code here with what we copied from our HOC. 
Our imports change, like use state becomes use reducer, and we need to pull in the Axios REST library, the reducer itself, and some constants, but otherwise this is exactly the same code. Our reducer did take in two parameters, base URL and route name, so we need to add those as incoming parameters to our custom hook. In our HOC, we defined the const props local that contained all the properties we wanted to return to our wrap component. We did that by assigning props local to our wrap component declaration, which ends up in the component we're extending as incoming props. Let's scroll down to the bottom of our use request custom hook and just simply return props local to its caller, which is the data context component. Switching back to data context, first thing is to change our custom hook call use request symbol to use request. Notice how usage of the return from use request does not change. It's still just as passed in the data context provider as the value. That means, of course, that our speakers component, which is what's being wrapped by our context, has access to everything returned from the use request custom hook. Our use request hook took in two parameters, base URL and route name. We want those set, not from this component, but our speakers component. Hold on to that thought, and we'll get to that when we modify our speaker's component in a moment. We do need to take in those two properties into our data provider, and then pass them through to our use request custom hook. Let's now switch to working on our speaker's component, and update it to handle these changes from our use request simple to our complete use request custom react hook. Starting at the top, since our new use request custom hook returns the name records instead of speakers, we need to rename what comes back from use context to speakers. We also need to add to the use context return error as well as the function put so the speaker's favorite button can execute updates. At the bottom, where we wrap our speakers component with the React context data provider, we need to add our base URL and route name parameters. Remember, those go through the data context and are used in the custom hook use request. Now let's see how we did. First, make sure your JSON server is running so your REST calls have some place to go. Browse to the speakers page and everything works, speaker favorite updates included. This is an elegant solution. It might feel at first like we created a lot of layers to use React context, but we really didn't. We defined a data context that wraps our speaker's component, and our speaker's component knows how to find the data from the context. The custom React hook we wrote has all the state logic in it, and it's simply tied to our data context. That's it. If this isn't 100% clear, in the next clip, we'll follow exactly the same pattern, but instead of managing a request, we'll manage a light dark theme for our site. We'll have a theme context, We'll have a use theme custom react hook, and we'll add a toggle theme button to our toolbar that flips the theme on the entire app. All components rendered in our layout will have access to the theme and will render appropriately based on the theme toggling.